Hi, I'm Mike Hodgetts from Delving Designs, and in this quick tutorial for Blender Geometry Nodes, I want to have a look at a problem that can occur when you are using multiple splines, um, and how to correct a problem that can sometimes occur, and that's unifying the curve tangents across multiple splines. Um, I've got this quick setup here uh, to illustrate the problem. Um, so I've got a curved circle that I've just moved to the left and the right with transform geometry and join them together. I'm then sampling the curve using an index node as the curve index um, to set the position of these two points. So we've got these two points here that are now uh, setting the position on these curves. And as I drag the factor up, you can see that both of the points are moving anti-clockwise around the curves. Um, however, if I drop a reverse curve node onto one of these, we've now got um, a bit of an issue where one of them is moving clockwise and the other anti-clockwise. Um, and where, especially when you're using curves procedurally and you're converting, say, like a, a mesh to a curve and then a curve back to a mesh um, or vice versa, you can sometimes end up where the tangents of especially cyclical curves can get flipped with no real kind of rhyme or reason as to why that happens. Um, and I'm just using this reverse curve node uh, to, to manually demonstrate that point. What if we then want to be able to get back to a point where that reverse curve node isn't there and these curve tangents are aligned in the same direction? Um, well, there's a relatively simple setup to be able to do that. Uh, first of all, what we're going to do is convert these curves to meshes. So I'm just going to add a curve to mesh node and drop it on there. The points are obviously now going to snap to the center because there is no curve to sample, which is why we have this little error message. What we're then going to do is capture an attribute on the point domain, and the attribute that we're going to capture is going to be the normal. Uh, we're going to drop this in here. Um, you'll see as well here that I'm using the new uh, 4.2 version of Blender where you can add multiple sockets into the capture attributes. We no longer need to specify uh, what type of field we're capturing, if it's a vector or a float or an integer, etc. You can just drag and drop um, and just connect multiple nodes sockets into the capture. Um, this, how, this will still work in previous versions of uh, geometry nodes where this isn't available. You just need to make sure that you set it to capture a vector on the point domain. From here, we're going to, we can just drag straight off of this, and we're going to do a dot product against the normal. Uh, for any of you that know vector math, um, this might seem a little strange because it, at the moment we're comparing a vector of zero against its own, its own vector. It's always going to return a value of zero in this setup. But because of the way that Blender's geometry nodes works uh, right to left, where it will interpret the node graph backwards, when we connect this up to um, another curve, it's going to... Ooh, didn't want to do that. There we go. So I view back to geometry nodes. Uh, so we're going to convert this back to a curve now. From here, from the dot product, we're going to evaluate it on the domain of the point domain. And we're going to say that if that value is less than zero, it's going to give us a Boolean. And if we view these on the spline domain, you'll now see that our left one is turning, is, is on, is um, a Boolean of true, and our right one is a Boolean of false which is exactly what we had here, where the left one is going in the opposite direction to the right. And the reason that this now works is it because the dot product, when we view it this way, is comparing the tangent of the curve, or the normal of the curve, against the normals of the mesh. So now all we need to do is drop a, another reverse curve node in here with this as the selection, and these tangents are now aligned correctly. 
and this works with multiple things. So I could have a curved spiral, for instance, and let's add that on here. Let's increase our points to three. And if I drag the factor around, you can see they're all going, it's still going anti-clockwise. If I drop a reverse curve node on this one, they're still going anti-clockwise because this setup is going to unify all of our tangents in the same direction. Um, so I hope that that was useful. Um, I'm sure that there's a million different applications where this can be um, applicable. But yeah, if you uh, like this video, please do give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks.